everyone. In today's video, we're going to be talking about mechanical constraints. Now, mechanical constraints are category of forces which act on technical objects. Before we talk about the specific type of forces mechanical constraints are, we're just going to have a broad definition of what a force is and what a technical object is. Now, forces are anything that causes a push or a pull. And it basically has to do with uh, an interaction between one object and another object. So to explain that in simpler terms, whenever an object is either pushed or pulled, that's caused by a force. Now, we've talked about uh, multiple different examples of forces. Now, an example of a force that we all have heard about is gravity. So when we're talking about the force of gravity, it's the interaction that we have between two celestial bodies. So usually we're talking about the scale of planets, natural satellites, and comets. And especially when we're talking about uh, humans on Earth, right, the reason why we're not floating into outer space is because we have the force of gravity pulling um, everything on Earth towards the core. That's why we can walk on land. And it's the same reason why we have the moon in orbit around the Earth, is that the force of gravity is pulling the moon towards the Earth, and at the same time, the force of gravity on the moon is pulling the, the Earth towards the moon. But because the moon has less mass compared to the Earth, you have that uh, nice distance where they're in celestial orbit. So gravity is a very good example of a force that we've all talked about. The second, friction, is basically the force uh, caused by two objects rubbing against each other. So whether we're talking about solid surfaces or whether we're talking about liquid surfaces, and it's the force of that rubbing interaction. And a lot of the times when it's extremely cold outside, what are you gonna do? You rub your hands together. And that rubbing motion produces heat. Another example of a force that we've all experienced, air resistance. So it's the force of basically the wind pushing against you. And you see this a lot, especially if you're doing anything outside and uh, you're running against the wind and you have to push harder and work harder because you have that force working against you. So all of these three are examples of what a force is, which is really uh, a push or a pull on an object which causes it to move. Now a technical object is pretty thing, it's, it's pretty broad because it's any object that is made by humans to meet a specific need. So by this definition, there is a huge uh, a range of uh, technical objects. So we can even consider things like a uh, paperclip, things like a cell phone, or even things like um, a mug can be considered Let's fix that up. Can be considered a technical object because it's anything that is made by humans to meet a specific need. So when we're talking about con mechanical constraints, we're really talking about forces on objects and the effect that they have on these technical objects. So with mechanical constraints, there's actually five key different constraints. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through each one, define each one, and talk about some examples of them. So when we're talking about mechanical constraints, there are five key forces. Compression, tension, torsion, deflection, and shearing. Now, tension is the force that stretches material. So a good way that we want to consider tension is a pulling force. So key examples of objects that are undergoing tension would be the classic example of a tug of war game between two people, 
or if uh, somebody is walking their dog and the dog is pulling on the leash, that pulling force that is uh, occurring on the, the rope or the leash is undergoing tension. Now the force symbol for tension, just because it's considered a pulling force, it's quite simply two arrows in opposite directions. So I'm just going to draw that right here. And there you go. Now compression is actually the opposite of tension, whereas tension is a pulling force. When we're talking about compression, we're talking about a force that is crushing material or pushing material in. So whenever you are, you know, crumpling something into a ball or when you're uh, smooshing something together, that would be the force of compression. Now, since compression is the opposite of tension, well, the symbol for compression is going to be, you guessed it, the opposite of tension. Whereas tension was two arrows pointing outwards, compression is going to be two arrows pointing inwards. Now, torsion is a twisting force. So whenever we're talking about torsion, we're talking about any force that twists material. So um, a good example of torsion could be uh, using a screwdriver and screwing in a nail to a piece of wood or taking a dishcloth and wringing out the dishcloth by twisting it together. So whenever we're talking about torsion, we're really talking about a twisting force. So the force arrows for uh, torsion would actually be two arrows going in a circular motion. So one arrow going one way, one arrow going the opposite way. Deflection. Um, another way to describe deflection is bending. So whenever we have uh, the force of deflection, we're basically bending objects. Now, I know the textbook sometimes refers to this force as the bending force, but the proper term is deflection. Now, um, Whenever we're drawing the force arrows for uh, the force symbols for deflection, it's a little bit different. So it's basically you have a plank, you would have one arrow going uh, pointing upwards, and then two arrows pointing downwards. Because if we're looking at bending, because I have my forces in the opposite direction, it's basically going to cause my material to either bend upwards or bend downwards. Now, the last mechanical constraint is shearing. Now, whenever we use the word to shear, the synonym means to cut. So whenever we're using shearing, we're basically using a cutting force. So the force of shearing is anything that causes a material to cut. Now, obviously, to do shearing, we would need to use things like uh, uh, scissors, or uh, pliers, which causes a cut in the material. Now, the symbol for shearing is a little bit trickier to draw. So it's actually a half arrow pointing upwards and a half arrow pointing downwards. And the reason why it looks like this is because whenever we're going to do shearing, we're actually cutting uh, the material into two. So this is basically a key overview of our five constraints and what they are, what they do, and how to draw the symbols. I hope that this uh, little review video helps, and I'll definitely see you next time. Bye!